In this lesson, we're going to do a quick review of some factoring techniques with particular focus on greatest common factor. Um, so for this example, we have the 8x to the 5th, y to the 7th, minus 20x to the 3rd, y to the 8th, and we want to factor this completely. Anytime that we're factoring, we always want to look for a greatest common factor first. Um, in this case here, we first want to look at our two terms, which would be 8x to the 5th, y to the 7th, and negative 20x to the 3rd, y to the 8th. In terms of our numbers, our greatest common factor between 8 and 20 would be 4. Because remember, one way to find your greatest common factor is to find the largest number that goes into both 8 and 20. Or you can list out your factors of 8, your factors of 20, and find the largest number that they both have in common. When we're dealing with our variables, remember that we want to look at our variables with like bases. So for right now, we'll look at x to the fifth and x to the third. And we always want to take the smaller of the powers. So for x to the fifth and x to the third, part of our greatest common factor would then be the x to the third. And the reason for that is x to the fifth is really x times x times x times x times x times x to the third is x times x times x. So if we're talking about what they have in common, well, they have visually three x's in common, which means that they have an x to the third in common. With our variables, it will always work out that way that you're going to be taking your smaller of your powers. So that same idea we can apply to y to the seventh and y to the eighth. Of those two, part that's going to be our greatest common factor would be y to the seventh. So, we found our greatest common factor. Now the question is, how do we factor using our greatest common factor? Well, remember, when factoring using greatest common factor, what you want to do is we need to keep that GCF of 4x to the 3rd, y to the 7th on the outside, and then we need to figure out what's going to happen after we take that out. Well, in taking it out, what we're actually doing is dividing each term by the greatest common factor. So it's important to know that the greatest common factor still needs to be on the outside. That is going to be part of your solution, but whether you're doing this in your head or if you wanted to work it out in order to find what's left over on the inside, we're dividing each term by the greatest common factor. So that 8x to the 5th, y to the 7th, I'm going to be dividing by our greatest common factor of 4x to the 3rd, y to the 7th. Same thing, the 20x to the 3rd, y to the 8th, I'm going to be dividing by 4x to the 3rd, y to the 7th. So in dividing each of them, we find out what we're left with. So 8 divided by 4 would just be 2. When we divide x to the 5th and x to the 3rd, remember when we divide with our variable base that's the same, we subtract our exponents, that's going to be x to the 2nd from 5 minus 3. y to the 7th and y to the 7th would just cancel out because 7 minus 7 is 0 and y to the 0 is just 1. Then we move on to our next term, the 20x to the 3rd, y to the 8th, so we're dividing that by 4x to the 3rd, y to the 7th, so we're left with then 20 divided by 4 is 5. Again, subtracting your exponents for your x is x to the 3rd and x to the 3rd. Well, 3 minus 3 is 0, which would be x to the 0, which is just 1. And then y to the 8th divided by y to the 7th, 8 minus 7 is 1, which would just be y to the 1st or y. So what we're left with then is 4x to the 3rd, y to the 7th. That was our greatest common factor. After we divided out the greatest common factor from each of the terms, our second factor is 2x squared minus 5y. We can always check our answer by distributing, uh, and we should get back to the original problem to see if we factored correctly. As another last note, just remember that although I showed how to do the division with the 4x to the 3rd, y to the 7th, um, you should be able to do that in your head without showing the work here, because the greatest common factor is going to keep coming back. So for our next problem, we're still focusing on finding the greatest common factor of the expression in order to factor the polynomial completely. In this case, it looks a little bit different because as we can see is that we have 2 times y minus 5 minus x times y minus 5. Our subtraction right in here is the reason why it's not factored completely, um, but we still want to use that greatest common factor. In this case, though, our greatest common factor is actually a binomial. So in the first example, we had a monomial. In this case, we have a binomial. Because if we look on either side of that subtraction that I highlighted in the center, we have 2 times y minus 5, and then we have x times y minus 5. Well, that means, as we can see, that y minus 5 is in common with each of our parts, which makes our greatest common factor y minus 5. So again, just like what we had before in the previous example, is that that greatest common factor is going to be on the outside, 
So that the binomial, we put it in parentheses. And then we can still divide it out. So again, you don't have to do this step. Um, you should start to get into the habit of doing it in your head because at least here we can see visually they both have the y minus 5. So I'm going to divide by the 2 times y minus 5 and the x times y minus 5. I'm going to divide out a y minus 5. And then again, whatever we're left with after we divide is what should go in our second factor. So here we have y, 2 y minus 5 over y minus 5, which means that your y minus 5s would cancel out, which would leave us with just a 2. Our subtraction would stay. Again, we have x y minus 5 times over y minus 5. So your y minus 5s would stay, which means that we're just left with an x. So again, we have our final answer of y minus 5 times 2 minus x. That would be our completely factored form. Again, just like with the previous example, you really want to try to get into the habit of doing this in your head so you don't have to do that division that I showed here. At least you, hopefully we can see that we're taking out that greatest common factor of y minus 5, which means that we're left with 2 minus x. Last, we have a four-term polynomial that we're going to want to factor completely. Our first step, no matter what, is to look to see if there's a greatest common factor between all four terms. So now that we've learned greatest common factor or reviewed it, you need to determine if the polynomial has a greatest common factor first before you do anything else. In this case, there is no greatest common factor between all four terms, so we need to move on. In this case, since there are four terms total, we would need to factor this using factor by grouping. So, in order to use factor by grouping, what we do is we separate the polynomial into two groups. So, I'm going to separate x to the third plus 2x squared, and then I'll group the negative 6x minus 12 together. So, your left-hand pair and then your right-hand pair. After we break them apart into two groups, we want to find and factor each group using greatest common factor. So I'm going to think of this as two separate problems. So on the left-hand side, I have x to the third plus 2x squared. So just looking at that part, I want to find the greatest common factor of that group, which would be x squared. So again, that x squared will be on the outside. After we divide out the x squared from each, that's what we go in our inside factor. Well, x to the third divided by x squared, subtract your exponent, so 3 minus 2 is 1. We're just going to be left with x. 2x squared divided by x squared, your x squareds would cancel out, so you're just left with a 2. In our next group, same idea, is that we have uh, negative 6x minus 12. We want to find the greatest common factor of negative 6 and negative 12. So between 6 and 12, our greatest common factor is 6. But anytime we're trying to find greatest common factor, remember if your first term's negative, you want to make your greatest common factor negative. So your GCF of this second group is actually going to be a negative 6. So when I take out negative 6, that means I'm dividing each term by negative 6. So negative 6x divided by negative 6 will become a positive x. Negative 12 divided by negative 6 and negative divided by a negative will become a positive 2. If we're doing this correctly, we should have the same factors, x plus 2 and x plus 2. Because now from here, we can use greatest common factor of the entire expression, just like what we saw in the previous problem. And here we would have a greatest common factor of x plus 2. Again, we would take that out from each when we take that out, we're left with the remaining x squared and then the minus 6. And in this case, this would then be fully factored.